Hello and welcome to Modkit. In this episode we'll be looking at the post-apocalyptic RPG Fallout New Vegas. The original game didn't suffer terribly in the visual department, but even when it was initially released it couldn't stand up to games at the time, let alone modern games. But while this guide will include many improvements to graphics, it'll also be focusing on bug fixes which were a major problem with the original game. So just before I start getting onto the modding guide itself, I want to talk about how this mod guide is put together. Because Fallout New Vegas has such a big modding community, a lot of the mod choices can end up being personal preference. So because of this I've tried to segment the guide into specifically basic mods and additional mods. This means you can pick which sections you'd actually like to include in your game without being stuck to a specific set. The basic section includes things that should be in everybody's game, so it mostly focuses on improving the stability of the game and fixing basic bugs. The ENB section focuses on installing the ENB mod. This can have a dramatic effect on the game's visuals as well as the performance and so is a separate section. We then go on to any customization which allows us to improve the game through basic mini configuration changes. Basic mods are the mods that I believe should be installed on pretty much everybody's game. These usually focus on bug fixes and additional basic graphics upgrades. And finally the recommended mod section, which includes mods that I have personally used that change New Vegas in some way that may or may not be to everybody's tastes. So the first thing you're going to have to do is find out which version of Fallout New Vegas you have. Because a lot of mods rely on having the official DLC and because a lot of mods require English language, both of these will probably be required for this guide. Although the basics may still work, some mods may still have issues when using foreign language versions or without DLC. 64-bit versions of Windows 7 or 8 will probably be required due to the high memory requirements. With that checked, you can then make sure that your copy is a clean install. If you've previously done a modified playthrough of the game, then likely your saves won't work with the newly modded version. So to make sure you have the best compatibility, it's best to delete both the Fallout NV folder from your Documents folder and the main Fallout New Vegas folder from your Steam directory. The next step involves changing some Steam properties. By right-clicking Fallout New Vegas within Steam and then choosing Properties, you can then set automatic updates to Disabled. Optionally, you can also disable Steam Community because it can have some effect on EMB later on. At this point, we can try and start the game. If starting the game leads to a crash, you might need to troubleshoot the launcher. One of the fixes for this issue is to go to the Fallout New Vegas folder, right-click the Fallout NV Launcher.exe and change its properties. From here, we can change the compatibility mode to Windows XP. Other fixes will be listed in the description. At this point we'll be configuring the game for two different setups. Once both Ultra and the Resolution has been selected, EMB requires many of the settings to be disabled, whereas a non-EMB build can be left as is. The next step of choosing a mod manager can be down to personal preference, but for the purpose of this guide I'm going to be choosing Mod Organizer as I find it's the most functional of the lot. Mod Organizer contains most of the benefits of Nexus Mod Manager while keeping everything nice and sorted, and allowing easy mod sorting and downloading from the Nexus. Installing Mod Organizer is as simple as downloading from the Nexus and using the built-in installer. You'll also want to tick the handle Nexus Mods box, as this will make using the Nexus much easier. In this case I'm installing it to a simple games directory. We'll also be installing the NVSE or New Vegas Script Extender. This allows more complex mods to be used within Fallout New Vegas. 7-zip is required to unpack this package, so downloading it from the link below will be required. After downloading NVSE, you can then right click it and extract using 7-zip. From here, simply copying the contents to the New Vegas directory will install it. EMB has a similar approach to installing, which will be covered later. The next mod to install is the 4GB patch. After downloading and opening, simply copy the contents to the Fallout New Vegas directory. At this point, we can do our first run of Mod Organizer. 
Here you'll be asked to select the Fallout New Vegas directory. The tutorial included in Mod Organizer is very well done and can help you understand how Mod Organizer works with New Vegas. Once fully launched, the first change you probably should make is to change the setting for automatic archive invalidation. And then we can enable the 4GB patch within Mod Organizer. To configure the 4GB patch, select the NVSE box on the right. From here, select Edit. Once here, select NVSE, followed by Modify. First, change the binary field to the 4GB patches exe file. Then change the argument field with the text listed in the video and the description. Followed by Modify and Close. At this point, you'll now be able to use the Download with Manager links on Nexus Mods. This makes downloading and installing mods as simple as clicking the Download with Manager link. By going to the New Vegas Stutter Remover page, you can now use the Download with Manager button. This downloads straight to Mod Organizer. You may be asked to sign in to your Nexus Mods account, in which case you may have to sign up if you do not already have an account. Once the download is finished, you can go to the Downloads tab. Here you will see the MVSE mod. On some mods, you may need to change the name of the mod so that it doesn't conflict with others. And some mods may need some relevant information given to them. For NVSR, it cannot find the data folder. So to solve this, we select the data folder shown on the right and right click it, selecting set as data directory. Once finished, the mod will appear on the left hand side. Here is where each individual mod will appear. Simply by ticking the box to the left of the mod, you can enable it. Installing mods now, such as NVAC, should now be as simple as selecting the download with manager button. This section involves any modification. Here we can improve the game's graphics without using additional mods. Once finished, Fallout New Vegas should be in a runnable state. The first any file we're going to edit can be done through Mod Organizer. By double clicking New Vegas Stutter Remover, we can open the Properties menu for it. From here, select the Any Files tab, then the Only Any File. The right box now shows the contents of the Any File, which we can now make changes to. The first change being replacing the value for B Replace Heap to 1, followed by scrolling down to I Heap Size and changing the value 250 to 450. Set F Maximum FPS to 60. After each step in this guide, you should be trying to run the game. You can do this by simply pressing the Run button in Mod Organizer. Mod Organizer now controls most of how New Vegas works, and so should be the only way of running the game. We can now move on to the main game Ini files. While these can be manually manipulated, the easiest way is to use the NV Configator. The Configator can be installed using the built-in installer, which will choose the default directory. This provides a nice visual representation of what settings can be changed and what they can do to the game. Once launched, go to the Settings button. Both the Fallout.ini and the Fallout.prefs.ini must be pointed to the Mod Organizer Profiles folder. Mod Organizer keeps its ini files separate from the default Fallout files, so this allows the configure to change these. For most values within the configure, simply increasing the value will improve the quality of that specific effect. The only values that should be specifically changed are ensuring anti-aliasing, anisotropic filtering, vertical sync and water displacement are set to zero or off for EMB users, as well as transparency multi-sampling. 3.0 shaders should be enabled. Under the general tab, field of view should be set to 83 for widescreen resolutions and mouse acceleration should be disabled. A list of recommended changes can be found in the description. This is best used to ensure you do not destabilize your game. In this section, we're going to be installing ENB. The first thing you need to do is download the latest ENB for Fallout New Vegas from the ENB website. Once done, simply copy the contents of the wrapper version folder into your Fallout New Vegas directory. While EMB is technically installed at this point, no graphical effects will be shown in game. This is where custom EMB presets come in. 
there are many Fallout New Vegas specific EMBs available on the Nexus. For most, the process of installing is simple as copying the contents of the folder into the Fallout New Vegas directory. For this guide, I'll be using the Enhanced Shader preset. Since later in this guide, I'm also going to be installing Nevada Skies, I'll use the EMB preset for Nevada Skies. After opening the archive, I'll copy the installation files to the New Vegas directory. Other folders within the archive contain different presets. These can be lower quality or higher quality and can help with lower performance. EMB can lead to some transparent dots appearing on your textures. The easiest way to fix this is to go to the EMB local.ini file in your Fallout New Vegas directory and change the fixed transparency bugs value to false. Another change that can be made at this point depending on personal preference is to disable depth of field. This can be done by going to the EMB series.ini file in the New Vegas directory and changing the enable depth of field value from true to false. This section will cover basic mods. The first of which should be an unofficial patch. Specifically for this guide, I'm going to use the YUP patch as I believe it keeps the game as default as possible. Other patch packs such as Mission Mojave and NVEC can also be used. Next we'll look at UI mods. UI modding within New Vegas can be quite complex and so after installing the Darnified patch and the mod configuration menu you may have to use things such as the One HUD and the Unified HUD. Installing Darnified UI requires the use of Mod Organizer's manual install method. To do this you must select the Archive Install button, then select the downloaded Darnified UI file. From here a slight any modification must be made. By going into Mod Organizer's any editor and editing the fallout.ini, you can copy and replace the information from the description below into the fonts area. You can then install the mod configuration menu. The mod configuration menu can be downloaded through the download with manager button. After installing MCM you must double click it in the left hand package menu. This brings up the properties page. Click the conflicts tab. Then right click the start menu XML file and select hide. Nevada skies affects the weather within New Vegas. It can be installed by using the download with manager and then disabling two of the ESPs, the TTW and the basic ESP. The interior lighting overhaul requires a manual download and then a manual extraction before being loaded manually into Mod Organizer. Follow the menu through. For the NV Interiors section, you can choose to install this. If you decide not to use NV Interiors, you can simply untick the ESP in the ESP menu. The Wasteland Flora overhaul requires an additional log patch to be applied. You can choose between the dead or fertile versions. The texture packs listed here have various effects on the game's graphics. The physics and collision changes affect ragdolls and objects within the game, and the NPC improvements can affect the character design of each character within the game, although this change can be down to personal preference. The Fallout character overhaul requires an any change in both the Fallout.ini and the Fallout.prefs.ini you must set B load face gen head EGT files to 1. The user interface must now be combined. To do this you must have downloaded the one HUD and the unified HUD files from the Nexus. You will also need the Fallout Mod Manager or FOMM. Download and install FOMM to your Fallout directory. We must then set up the executable in Mod Organizer. Similar to the 4GB patch, we must open the edit menu, click modify, enter FOMM as the name, and point the binary field to the FOMM.exe. Skip through the dialogues of FOMM till you get to the main screen.
choose Package Manager and select No for the dialogues. Press the Add Foam Mod button. Then select the one HUD file. Followed by Activate, Install and Yes to All. Close Fallout Mod Manager. Files will have appeared in the Overwrite package. Right click Overwrite and press Create Mod. Give it the name One HUD. Restart Fallout Mod Manager and click the package menu. Press Add Foam Mod. Select the unified HUD. Then activate Install and Yes to All. Close Fallout Mod Manager. Right click Overwrite, Create Mod and give it the name Unified. These two packages must be deleted and remade on every reinstallation. The final steps involve making sure that your package load order is correct. This load order can be found in the description. You can change the load order of packages by dragging and dropping them. Press Sort to load loot and automatically organise your plugins. Ensure you have no exclamation marks in the plugins list. This may mean you are missing a master and may cause the game to crash. And finally start the game. At this point the basic installation is complete and you can enjoy an improved version of Fallout New Vegas. The additional mods mostly consist of gameplay mods. Mods such as Project Nevada can greatly change the way the game plays. Project Nevada also needs an additional patch to be enabled for Darn UI. To do this, first go to the Mod Organizer folder, then to the Downloads folder. Right click and extract the Project Nevada 7-zip file. Enter it and go into the Optionals, Darn UI and copy the Menus folder. Go back to the Mod Organizer folder and into the Mods folder. Open the Project Nevada folder and paste overwriting the menus files. Eve enhances weapon visual effects. NV Interiors makes more buildings accessible within New Vegas. You will need the Core, Combo and NMC patches for this download. And the Enhanced Camera mod allows the player to see their body within the first person view. Project Nevada should be moved between the Mod Configuration menu and the Darnified UI. Unfortunately, at this point you must do a full UI rebuild. This is done to ensure you don't have any incompatibilities between your UI mods. Whenever adding or removing a UI mod, you must redo these steps. First, delete all packages with a UI modification within them. This includes One HUD and Unified HUD. Then, open Fallout Mod Manager go to the Packages Manager and then deactivate both mods. Reinstall all mods from either the Downloads menu or your manual installation mode. Remember to re-add the Project Nevada optional files to its mods directory. Also ensure that your package load order is correct. When done, repeat the steps as indicated in the One HUD and the Unified HUD section of this guide. Then finally, sort your plugin order. At this point additional mods have been added to the game. But this setup means you can choose from any of the mods available on the Nexus Mods website. And I strongly suggest checking out some of the other mods available on the Nexus. Most of the improvements come from the improved textures. Armour shows much greater detail. Ground and building textures show much more detail and skies feel much more dynamic. Coupling this with the improved NPC design makes Fallout New Vegas a much more believable world. Thanks for watching.